Okay, before I start this video, I should explain that this has probably been technically the most difficult vlog I've ever made. It was already a pile of crap and I've had to dump a load of footage because of this useless DJI Osmo Pocket, which is fast becoming the most disappointing piece of equipment I've ever bought. Then to top it off, I rushed out to get some final footage filmed so that I could edit and upload today. And having bought the external mic adapter for the Osmo Pocket, didn't record any audio whatsoever. So I'm gonna have a go at remembering what I was talking about so that this video kind of makes sense. Anyway, on with the show. Okay, so what I'm probably talking about here is introducing What's Up 233 and probably explaining very much what I just explained a moment ago. Moaning about the camera, explaining that the original plan for this video was to be almost a tutorial of how I broke down the drivetrain of the bike, removed the old chain and replaced it with this gorgeous KMC shiny gold, super lightweight, lovely chain. And um, the point of this video was to be test of that chain and some squirt water and wax lube, I think it's called. Um, but obviously the focus problems with the DJI meant that most of that footage is complete garbage and I couldn't use it. So the video has taken a, a slight turn. The other thing I I know I mentioned here is that this is dedicated to one of our favorite beloved members, Mr. Darren Hunter, who is currently on his sick bed with some kind of strange exotic um, ailment. I think it could be grayscale. Um, I've been learning a lot about that in this documentary I've been watching recently where you get these sort of black scaly patches on your arms, it's incredibly painful. Um, I think milk of the poppy is something that should be used as a, a painkiller. Oh yeah, I just remembered, yeah, I came across this river across the road and in the interest of my beautiful Cervelo, yep, yeah, turn around go back the other way uh, so yeah this is dedicated to Darren Hunter which is why I'm particularly disappointed that having gone out and rushed this filming so that I could upload for him to watch while he's in bed that none of the none of the sound recorded I'm not sure what I'm talking about now probably still just that puddle and the fact that I'm surprised the amount of water that was out there considering it's not rained here for for weeks well a week maybe so yeah a little bit irritated that um, my bike was going to be getting dirty this whole ride and my last ride have been dominated by a creaky creaky bottom bracket bottom bracket creaks and I, I can't I can't ignore them it, it's really affecting the enjoyment of any ride I do and I think I'm probably reading my lips there I think I just said the words creaky bottom bracket so that's that was clearly on my mind at this point um, as it turns out, you'll see later in the video, I kind of discover that it possibly isn't even the bottom bracket that's causing the creaks. Um, but we shall see. Oh my goodness, I nearly crashed there by the looks of things. And that, that goes to show you kids, you should never ride one-handed unless you have supreme bike handling skills. Um, it, it even nearly caught me out there. So, so yeah, the road test of the gold chain, very smooth, really lovely, and, and the wax as well really lovely uh, but it was hard to tell fully because of the the other noises and irritations that i was having oh just had an email from sky cinema hotel transylvania 3 is premiering this week apparently anyone that's interested um i'm not right, i'm still talking my mouth's still moving i don't know what i could possibly be talking about 
I look angry. I'm not angry, but disappointed. Yeah, I don't know. I know my intention here was to ride, oh, there we go. Look, I was gonna say was to ride a bit, find a nice spot to pull over and properly take you through the, um, the chain, give you a better look at it. So I've pulled over in what originally looked to be a really picturesque spot, this gate to a farm, uh, lovely fields and trees behind, no reason for concern, or so I thought. Um, yeah, looks lovely. So anyway, I'm talking about the chain, how long it took to fit, and ah, quite importantly for anyone that looks at my Strava file, the fact that I took my rotor train ring off, my power meter off the bike to clean everything, put it back on and haven't calibrated it. So I think any power figures that are coming out from this particular ride, I think are probably about 20% higher than the actual power I was putting out. It certainly didn't feel like the numbers that the Strava file will show. Oh, spun that, what am I doing? Oh yeah, okay, this is yeah, spinning the camera around so I can go, in. I mean, look at it, it looks amazing. I mean, there's already, I've already picked up a load of crap and dirt, but look, the gold chain on that carbon, carbon chain ring, that looks brilliant. Nice clean cassette, looks excellent. I, right, now I know exactly what I'm gonna be talking about. Eagle-eyed will have spotted, I have a brown hairband wrapped around my front derailleur. And I now, yep, I'm gonna pan over to this back derailleur and I have a fluoro pink hairband wrapped around that derailleur. This isn't just for style and trying to personalize and accessorize my bike. There is a more genuine reason for this. I'm gonna do a whole other video, which is gonna be my sort of year in test of ETAP. So I won't go, I won't dwell on it too much, but I know what I'm talking about here is the fact that a few weeks ago, I had to do a ride to drop off my daughter's PE kit at school and suddenly my rear mech wasn't working. Having fallen foul to the not remembering to charge my battery before, I figured that was the situation, and, but I was pretty convinced I'd, I had only charged it a day or two before. Uh, anyway, jumped off uh, with a view to swapping the front derailleur battery with the rear derailleur battery to give me more choice of gears. As I took the rear battery off, I noticed a little plastic clip that holds the battery in place had snapped off. So at that point, I was already pretty angry. Carried on with my plan of swapping the batteries over. So I took the front battery off and lo and behold, the clip was broken from that as well. So, I mean, apparently there have been loads of cases of this. Having researched it since getting back, there, there have been loads of complaints about this. SRAM want nothing to do with it and they're, they're not acknowledging any kind of design flaw or anything like that. Um, but surely there are too many people for this to have been a, a coincidence. Um, I think that hand gesture I just made there was to demonstrate that although the batteries do stay clipped in place, they do, the, the bottom of them moves out, which moves them away from the connecting pins, which is why my rear derailleur stopped working. Uh, but the point of the hairbands was, given that I was riding on some of the bumpiest, roughest, crappiest roads known to man, uh, certainly in this part of the world, I wanted to make sure they didn't knock themselves loose completely and I lose a 35 pound battery. Um, so anyway, the hairbands are there as a, is it a bodge or a hack? I don't know, maybe I'll send it to GCN to determine, but uh, they're there basically to make sure until I can come up with a more elegant solution other than spending another 35 quid on replacement batteries, um, really just to keep them in place. I'm still talking about it, which is amazing. Um, I've just explained it pretty well, I think, in that number of words. So I'm not sure what else I could be saying about it. Maybe, well, I'm not, I'm thinking about what I'm talking about. That's why I keep pausing in between sentences. Um, very unprofessional. I, I do remember what I was saying now, actually. I'd, as I've been doing in this voiceover, I've been really moany, and I was really moany in this video. And I remember, oh, I've just remembered something there as well. Ooh, ooh. Um, I remember saying that the first subscribers to my channel used to comment that they liked my channel because I had quite a cheery disposition and it was always quite positive and fun. I've really slipped away from that recently and it's, it's annoying me. So I'm actually being grumpy about the fact that I'm being grumpy. So please do slap me down if I continue in this negative mold. Um, I wanna get back to being cheerful, smiley, happy with every single ride and every single Zwift race. Um, I think I think I've stopped recording here because I'm just staring at the camera. Yeah, look, this isn't this bit wasn't even meant to make the video. Oh no, I've started talking again about something. I don't know. 
don't know what. Maybe, I'm, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna say, do you want another look at my bike? Well, yeah, camera's flipped. Um, yeah, so I, ah, that's what it was, right. So I, I realized that this ride was potentially doomed from the start. Obviously I had the situation with the ETAP batteries flying off. Um, I had the noisy bottom bracket, or what I think was a bottom bracket. And also, if you remember, I had a puncture a few months back and I had repaired the tire quite expertly, I think, with a bit of other, another tire and some non-stretch fabric glued to the inside to stop it bulging, basically, when I inflate the tire. Um, but as you can see, the, the split has started to open up and there is a slight bulge. So I was pretty convinced that at some point I was getting a puncture during this ride. So yeah, that's what I'm pointing out there. And it just gave me another reason to have a bit of a moan and a whinge. So, but at the end of the day, um, look, it was a working day. I'm out on a Friday on my bike, riding through countryside. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten my gloves. My hands were freezing. Um, <laughs> so, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have anything to grumble about. I just, yeah, but I probably still am. Anyway, you know, I mentioned that it turned. I, I, I thought I'd pulled over into this really lovely spot. Um, that gets thrown into a question in a minute with something that I find on the floor. So I'm just about to leave to carry on my, my ride, get some miles in my legs, and um, I spot this. Now I know it definitely wasn't mine, it's not my, not my size, and so it didn't drop out of my pocket, but it did make me think, have I just pulled over into a known dogging site? Um, so yeah, I, I made a pretty hasty, hasty, hasty retreat Obviously I took it with me because those kind of things could be useful, particularly with a, a dodgy ETAP battery where water could get in behind the connectors. So could be quite handy for waterproofing. Anyway, where I'm coming up to now, regular viewers will recognize it's a road called Enterdent, which I use as one of my sort of benchmarks for fitness. And then at this point, I'm halfway up Enterdent and that kind of tells you my level of fitness. I was on my ass. I, it's only about a minute long ride and I think I was about a minute off my pace, so I was practically standing still. Um, yeah, really, really struggling. But it was at this point where I had a thought about the noise coming from my bike, that it could actually be the free hub on my rear wheel as opposed to my bottom bracket. And the reason I thought that is at the bottom of this climb, where the, 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 the creaking and the clicking had got louder, I spun my crank backwards quite a few times, and it almost sounded like the bearings were sorting themselves out and then just sort of sat back in place because most of that climb it was nice and silent again the noise did come back so that's spoiler alert the noise did cut what am i filming now a bit of crotch cam sorry sorry ladies um i went to cover it with my hand then um i'll put a fuzz thing on there um you don't need to see any of that what? okay that, right so this was me virtually dying at the top of the incident what was i saying yeah so the noise does come back but every time i spin my cranks back quite quick it seems to settle things down again for a good few minutes afterwards so what i'm going to do is i will actually pop another rear wheel on the bike and go for another ride in the next day or two and see if that resolves it i'm kind of hoping it is the free wheel free hub because i've got a press fit bottom bracket and i think that's what i'm explaining here is i would rather replace the bearings in the rear in the rear hub and try and replace a press fit bottom bracket. I don't have the tools, I don't have the know-how, and um, quite frankly, it scares the crap out of me. So uh, fingers crossed that is the case. Um, I'm also explaining that the reason for pushing myself up that hill was this was the first ride in what will be, I'm hoping, a pretty intense session or period of training in anticipation for the WKG Montrose meetup, which is happening in, at the end of June. And um, I need to shed quite a few kilos and build quite a few watts in my legs for that trip. So riding up little punchy hills like that um, and combining it with some more, some, some longer, more um, stamina based efforts will probably put me in good stead. Right, I, I'm on the, um, the quarry road now that sort of takes me back to my home. As you can see, the little Osmo is struggling to focus, seems to prefer the background to my face. Uh, so focus isn't great. Brilliant. What would I be? Oh, th at this point, I'm pretty much just showing off that I'm riding no handed. I think the, the point of me putting my hand in shot every so often was really just so that you were aware 
that I was riding no, no handed. I can't see any other reason why I'd be doing that. Just demonstrating my balance and skills and obviously I'm only brave enough to do that when I'm on a road that is completely empty, Ooh, which I almost very timely demonstrate with a little raise of the camera. So yeah, oh yeah look, see, I'm, wave at the, I'm definitely, oh no, 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 I was trying to test out the focus on the, on the camera there, but also a little bit of like, look at me, I'm holding the camera in one hand and waving my other hand so I can only be riding no handed, how good am I? Right, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but I've just remembered something that I do want to talk about. And this is a genuine request. If anybody that bought the WKG arm warmers, large or medium, I think, have a pair that they don't want, don't use, don't need, I will buy them back at more than I sold them for. I'm desperate for them. I keep wearing these Castelli ones and every time I put them on, it bugs the crap out of me that I don't have official WKG arm ones. Look, there we go, look, I've done a nice close-up, just a real timely little shot of the Castelli ones. They're fine, but I want the team ones, and I can't, I, I don't know when our next kit order will go in. Um, why am I just staring at the camera? This car, I bet this must have been a fascinating video anyway. Anyway, so please, 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 if you have the arm warmers, and you gen I'm not, I don't want anybody to do it out of charity or anything like that, but if you, genuinely don't use them and would like to sell them back and make a couple of pound profit please let me know and i would definitely buy them i don't care if they're worn or whatever um i i just i really want a pair because i accidentally sold mine before i even got to wear them so yeah i know i'm nearly home now so i'm probably wrapping up the video so i will just wish darren hunter all the best and rich siegler i think is ill as well and anyone else that's i mean we've all been we've all been brought down with this thing uh, this, I, I, like I say, I think it's grayscale from touching a one of the stone people, is it? You get touched, I can't remember. I'll have to watch that documentary again. It's if you come into contact with the, uh, a stone stone person or a rock, rock person, something like that, and they touch you, your bare skin, you can contract grayscale. Uh, and you can only really be cured by a grand maester at the Citadel, but um, like I say, Milk of the Poppy does a good job of just easing your pain for a while, but it does send you a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up the video because I think that's probably what I was doing. And my camera's finally got focus on my face. Thank you for putting up with this. It's just, oh, there we go. Look, it's ended. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, yeah, get well soon, guys. Anyone that's, that's under the weather, please drop me a line if you want to sell me back your thingies, um, arm warmers. And I'll see you soon.